Cincinnati's Riverfront Redevelopment, Bats at the Banks, created by Kelsey Goins. Cincinnati is a beautiful city, cheerful, thriving, and animated. I have not often seen a place that commends itself so favorably and pleasantly to a stranger at the first glance as this does, Charles Dickens. Cincinnati, a medium-sized city located in the southwestern part of Ohio. Cincinnati is home to a little less than 300,000 people with over 50 neighborhoods. Since 1997, major changes have been coming to the city to bring back the city. With this mass redevelopment in the city, the city and the taxpayers of Hamilton County solely focused on the redevelopment of the riverfront. The city and the taxpayers wanted their city to be able to compete with what was going on across the river at Newport. Cincinnati was losing out on business because of all the things that Newport had to offer. Even though Cincinnati had a stadium to offer, Newport did not. Fewer and fewer people were going to the games and instead would go to the restaurants and entertainment. Cincinnati had to find a way in which they could bring the business back to their side of the Ohio River. For as long as people can remember, Cincinnati has always been known as a baseball city. Cincinnati was the first place to have a professional baseball team. The Red Stockings were in the National League. Since the early 1800s, baseball has been entertainment to the city in the tri-state area. With the growth of the sport and the growth of the city, Cincinnati Reds have had to adapt to the needs of the city and the needs of the sport. Throughout the years, the Red Stadium has got, undergone major changes, from reconstructing to moving the stadium due to the rapid changes. With the redeveloping of the stadium, urban redevelopment has taken place. Baseball stadiums have brought money to the urban areas that they are located in because with the help of the city, developing of the stadium has helped the city financially. The financial gain of the baseball team has helped Cincinnati by bringing new activities to the area. The riverfront was first known as public landing in 1830 before baseball moved to the riverfront. This area was where the boats unloaded. There was housing, restaurants, and markets. The baseball field was a few streets up from the riverfront during this time. In 1912, the Reds finally moved to the riverfront, which was called Redland Field, which was later changed to Crosley Field. A man of the name, Powell Crosley, privately funded them during this time. Powell bought the team in 1930 due to him thinking it would be a good thing for the newly major league team and it would bring more people to the city. Crosley Field was the Reds' field for 60 years. This is the longest time that they stayed in a stadium. The stadium was two on the riverfront. It added some structural presence to the area. During this time, the southern part of the downtown area where the riverfront was located, planners were adding freeways and cutting off urban areas. The new highway tied the northern part of downtown to the southern part. This highway brought in even more people to the Reds' games. The highway connected Interstate 75 to Interstate 71. People were coming in from Kentucky and Indiana to come see the Reds play. This seemed to be happening all over the country. With the new highways that were being constructed, this was expanding the city. The outcome with the expanding city turned into a new stadium that was being redeveloped on the riverfront. The only problem where the stadium was being built, there was second tenement housing in the area. In order for the stadium to be built, where there was a relocation of people. The stadium was built in 1970 and moved closer to the waterfront. Like most cities that were rebuilding their stadiums, in order for the city to save their money, they were building both a football stadium and a basketball stadium together, which is exactly what Cincinnati did. In 1997, Hamilton County voters voted on two stadiums that would beautify the riverfront. The ballot consisted of two new stadiums and adding an addition of an urban community to the area. The stadiums would be majority publicly funded by taxpayers. The two teams also wanted to be separated. They both needed facilities along with larger facilities. In 2002, Riverfront was demolished in 37 seconds.
When the Hamilton County voters voted on new stadiums, they voted to raise the taxes in order to build them. The new Red Stadium was completed in 2004 next to where Synergy Field was once located. Hamilton County voters and Cincinnati officials used the taxpayers' money to pay for the beautification of the riverfront. Great American Insurance paid the city $75 million for the naming of the stadium. In order for the cities to have these new stadiums, they were financed through private-public partnerships. In addition to Cincinnati's history with private-public partnerships, one city in particular used largely private, more than public funds to pay for their stadium, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Due to the construction of these new highways, people were able to get to the America's pastime earlier than usual. During these times, baseball was just getting introduced to new cities. In the summer of 1957, the Brooklyn Dodgers decided to flee to Los Angeles. It was due to the new construction of highways is why they were able to flee so far. During this time, the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Walter O'Malley, wanted to build a new stadium for his team. He believed that his team had outgrown Ebbets Field. The city planner, Robert Moses, did not want to build the team a new stadium in Brooklyn. Instead, Robert Moses wanted to build a stadium in Queens. Mr. O'Malley continued to set threaten the city planner and the city officials of Brooklyn that he and his team were leaving, but no one took him serious. During the movement, the city of Los Angeles was persuading the Dodgers to move, and they promised to build a new ballpark in Chavez Ravine, which also happened to be a low-income, largely Hispanic neighborhood. After the city planner of Brooklyn heard of what L.A. was doing, he insisted on promising to build them a stadium in Queens. But Walter O'Malley was not interested in hearing these plans, but instead insisted on taking his team's talent to Los Angeles. While the team was relocating to Los Angeles, the Chavez Ravine was a neighborhood that consisted of low-income families. These families lived in this area due to the discrimination that took place in Los Angeles. The area was seen as being blighted. The land was purchased from the inhabitants before a plan was proposed for the Dodgers. The city used eminent domain as a way to gain control. The inhabitants were forced to leave the area by 1954. They promised the community a lot of different things, such as housing and the rebuilding of schools and green space. A few years later, before the plan could be carried through, the Los Angeles voters voted on turning that land into the Dodgers' new ballpark. Similar to most cities during this time, baseball stadiums were used as subsidies for cities. Cities officials believed this would bring prestige to their cities. Cincinnati needed urban redevelopment to happen in order to compete with cities that compare in size. With the addition of the Red Stadium, specifically, it has brought new opportunities to the city such as the All-Star Game, which will be happening in 2015. With the All-Star Game in 2015, this means that there will be a variety of new people and new money coming into the city, which will allow the city to do new things. With the redevelopment of the waterfront especially, Cincinnati has gained an urban community with housing, retail and restaurants, police station, museums, and a park. This has also helped to bring the younger generation of 25 to 40 years old back to the city. And with this help, the area where the stadium is located is now no longer vacant land, but is a 24-hour neighborhood, which has also made it safer. The city is also bringing in a streetcar that stops at the new development where the stadiums are located. In conclusion to Bats at the Banks, the city has made a major comeback with the updating of the stadiums. The city has become more welcoming. The city is bringing people back to live downtown, and the city has also profited significantly off of the redevelopment. Cincinnati has finally been put back on the map to compete with other cities.